Welcome back to the Spurs Chat Podcast. I hope you're all keeping safe and well. Tottenham Hotspur are sitting top of the Premier League. I'm not getting carried away, but we are sat top of the Premier League. We have just beat Southampton 4-1 at the Tottenham Hotspur Stadium. I've got three very special guests with me. Um, now, goals from Sessignon, uh, Eric Dyer, an own goal, and Dijan Kuliszewski. Assists from Dijan Kuliszewski, Hunmin Son, and Emerson Royale. Fantastic performances from a lot of the Spurs players today, particularly the wing-backs and Dijan Kuliszewski. Um, let's introduce the three guests to you. We have got Richard Whitehead, MBE, back with us. Rich, how are you? Yeah, awesome. What a starting day. Yes. This is what we wanted First 20 minutes was a bit of a tough watch, but after that, yes, that's what we needed. We needed that as, as, as fans. We needed to see the team from last year really come to the fore and just deliver today. So come on, you Spurs. Come on. Come on. We will certainly get into every single moment. We've also got singer Leo the Lion back with us. Leo, it's been a long time. How are you? Nice to have you it's back. It's been a minute, but it's been a long, long time coming. Yes! Four yes. one, baby! <laughs> the summer is here. The team is back. Spurs just gave us four delicious goals. Mate, the sun is out. I'm smiling, man. Fantastic. Good stuff. And we've also got actor Ricky Norwood, good friend of mine. Rick, how are you? I am buzzing as usual, Chris. I am buzzing. I have been so excited for this season to start. And to start it like we have, four goals, four what? Oh, my gosh. The, the battling, the tackling, the, the yeah. crosses, the goals themselves. My goodness, yeah. we are off to a banger. And it's just the beginning. We haven't integrated no one into the side yet. It's just the beginning. We ain't even started yet. And look how we start. This season's going to be, I can't wait. I'm just super happy, super buzzing, Chris. Super buzzing. Well, we will certainly get into everything. So before we get into it, I would just like to tell you about an exclusive deal. NordVPN are giving everybody who watches this channel and listens to this show a huge discount off a NordVPN plan and one additional month absolutely free. It is completely risk-free with NordVPN's 30-day money-back guarantee. I use this myself so I can thoroughly recommend this service. It is the fastest VPN in the world. No buffering or no lagging while streaming. It also also protects your data whilst traveling and using Wi-Fi. NordVPN protects you wherever you are in the world. NordVPN can also save you money whilst buying subscriptions from other countries at a cheaper price, purchasing flights from different virtual locations to find cheaper deals. And if you want to watch sporting events which aren't airing in your region, you can switch your virtual location to a country which is showing the event. So as I said, I fully recommend this service. So grab your exclusive NordVPN deal now by visiting nordvpn.com forward slash Tottenham fans to get a huge discount. One additional month, absolutely free of charge. It is risk free with a 30 day money back guarantee. Don't miss it. And now let's get back to talking Tottenham. Check you out with your ad breaks. Hey, <laughs> he's frozen. I think he needs the he's Lord gone. right now. He's, got, he's gone it? to sleep. After today, I think I need that Nord VPN. So I'm going to have to ask him what, what that forward slash discount code was, man. I'm telling you. <laughs> Um, he's that shocked. Look how shocked he looks that we've obviously won today. And yeah, oh, yeah. Bro. Is, he, is, is, is he at as is, is he at the station? Mate, no, mate, at the station outside the ground. Is at Vicarage Road, I think. Oh, right. he's, he's cut off, man. But what a game today, guys, man! Absolutely buzzing, man. The sun was out. Conte part. I, 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 I mean, I loved the game, man. I really enjoyed it. What did you think? Mate, you're sick. Like, you know what? What for me? I, I kind of at the kickoff. I, I what, what was I expecting? I was expecting like foot, foot, football. I was expecting to press from the off. Mm. I think the the problem was because everybody, the whole expectation of the fans with the new signings and Conte's kind of new, um, new, uh, new real perspective of what the team can actually achieve this year. I yeah. think the fans were like, it, there's a lot of pressure on the, on the team. And I think they, the reason why it's so slow is because 
they forgot what their jobs were. And <laughs> you then, reckon? <laughs> yeah, I, I just, I, I'm serious. I think they just really forgot that that they were meant to be pressing. And also the expectation wasn't just the top four, but obviously to continue up the league to actually really press for that top two. And then obviously gold behind and then Spurs really came into um, what they were doing last season, pressing the ball, uh, two or three um, quick passes, looking for that breakaway move. Mm. And brilliant. Like after, after the first goal, I think the real top of them came to the fall. Were you surprised? Were you surprised with the lineup though at the start? Not really. No, I, I, I think. Were you were you surprised? Yeah, because I was I was expecting at least I wasn't expecting I was expecting at least one of the new signings to start. But the yeah, fact no, that I'm, it was, you know, yeah. what about you? but but you know, but you know what's really good about this and what I have kind of noticed, and I hope this is what it is. But Conte's making everybody earn their shirt, so yeah, it's not sure. like when. We're not like an eleven that needs immediate surgery, especially because we've got Benton Kerr and Kulusevski. But mm. what he's doing is he's making sure that everyone earns their space, everyone earns that shirt. Mm. So this is why he's not chucking in Spence or or, or Basuma or Perisic straight away. Right. Look, if you want it, you've got to fight for it, and I think that pushes the whole squad, bro. That pushes the Absolutely. whole squad. And, and on the first 20 minutes, I, I, look, I only got to see the highlights, but I'm going to take a guess right. that what that first 20 minutes was, was getting Southampton into a full sense of security because he likes to back off and then hit them when they're spaced. But it was, but from what I saw, mate, yeah. like... I look, just think it was slow. I just think it was slow. Do you know, do you know when, we, when we played last season and it was like, we just didn't wake up? Mm, we like mm. kind of the... Bu- it was kickoff, and then all of a sudden, like the crowd were like behind the players, and then all of a sudden, the players' expectation was to take take that ball forward, but nothing really happened. He's back. No, he, he's he's on the Vega Wi-Fi. Did, did you get the north sorted? I'm sorry, it's so hot here, and uh, I'm overheated. So apologies. <laughs> it's, it, it's the top of the top of the league. You know, I'm so excited. But um, Rich, I want to start with you. Um, let's go through um, the thoughts on the game. Um, because, of course, it was a very dis- uh, impressive display from Tottenham. Of course, we went 1-0 down, um, but we come back, scored four goals, and, uh, you know, we could have scored an absolute hat ball today. Yeah, um, I was just saying to the boys as well, the first 20 minutes was a bit... Like, I, I, I'm not sure what... I think there's a lot of expectation on the players. Um, fans, obviously, um, the media kind of really going, actually, Spurs could challenge the top two this year. And the players kind of just got ahead of themselves slightly. Um, and for me, they just needed to kind of reset, get back into shape and actually start to actually enjoy playing football for Spurs. Um, we, we could have had, like you said, a hat full of goals in the game. But you have to take one, one pass at a time, one play at a time. When we were 1-0 behind, we didn't panic. Uh, there was clearly a plan in place. Um, um, all the shapes, if you looked at the the game, and, and I did watch how the players were kind of really interacting with each other. And I think that's why, um, going back to what Leo said just before you were, you were on, uh, Chris, the reason why he didn't integrate some of the new signings is because he trusted the team from last year. Yes. Just, yeah. He's, he's making them earn the shirt, isn't he? isn't he, Chris? This is what I'm seeing. I'm seeing, even though we've signed six players, if you if you want to start, then you're going to have to earn it. We're not just going to give it to you because our first 11 right now, and especially because of Benton Cor and Kulusevski, our first 11 right now is solid. So, you know, it's up to the people that have got the shirt to keep it and it's up to those that haven't got it to earn it. So I think that's going to only push Tottenham and push us to greatness even more so this season. Absolutely. Um, Leo, let's come to you. Your thoughts on the game? You know, yeah. I mean, I, you know, initially at first with the, the lineup, um, I was a bit surprised. I thought that Conte was going to start with at least a, one or two of the of the new signings. Um, but again, you know, it's Conte, so you know we have to go with what he goes with. He knows best, you know. And um, so, I mean, just mirroring what Ricky said, obviously, you know, he he wanted. I feel like he, he he probably wants the team, the, the new players to fight for their position, you know, and it kind of helps 
the whole team as a squad to know that they, you know, everyone's going to get a fair crack at playing, you know, at, at having a, a chance, you know, and and just because you've made signing doesn't mean that you're going to lose your your place. You have to fight for your place, you know. And I think it it helps bring the team to work together to understand that you know it's a fair playing field. Um, the first, you know, the first, you know, first 10, 15 minutes. You know, I thought we played, it was, it took some time for us to get into the game. I was even looking at, we were doing a bit of loose passes here and there. Um, Bentacle, who I thought played fantastic, really, really amazing today. The first 15, 10, 15 minutes, you know, his passes were a bit off. You know, Kane and Son weren't really in the game at all, um, you know, especially in the first 10 or 15 minutes. But, you know, and then we went, we went a goal down. But you know what? I wasn't, I, I, I didn't panic, you know. I, I, I didn't panic because... I still felt that we had enough to do. And I don't think um, Southampton really did much, you know. So, um, yeah, but, you know, we, we after the 20 minutes, we, we got the equaliser. Great goal from um, Sessignon. And, you know, it was just, we knew we'd, we were going to kick on from then. And, and so we did. Fantastic. I really loved it. I'll tell you what, I was so pleased for both fullbacks today uh, mm. because I thought both of them had outstanding performances and the improvements again under Antonio Conte uh, really showed today. Um, Ricky, um, you know, we scored four today. We could have had an absolute hatful. We created so many chances. Um, is this a real sign of watch out the rest of the Premier League for Tottenham? <laughs> yeah, of course, because we haven't even started yet, Chris. We haven't even started. The biggest thing that I can sense from everything to do with Tottenham, whether that be the board, the players, the manager, the fans, is that we have a confident belief. We don't have arrogance. We don't have delusion. Some, sometimes we, we have a little bit of delusion. <laughs> I, I, I like a little bit of delusion. But anyway, but what yeah. I'm saying is, is that there is a strength and belief that this team is going to achieve something under this manager, under this regime, under this process under these tactics, under these formations that we are going to achieve. I mean, the fact that Dyer got, got made it 2-1, do you know what I mean? He's playing centre-centre-back. Like you were talking there, right? You're talking about the the, the, the full-backs doing really well. Sessegnon started and Emerson Royale started. Two players who have got bits and pieces of criticism. They haven't, you know, we haven't seen the best of them as yet. But the fact that they've got well, on the right side, there's there's two or three people ready to come in at that right wing-back slot. But on the left side, you've got Perisic ready to come in. It's pushed those players that have started. It's pushed Absolutely. them on. They, they have to make a statement. They have to show Conte what they're about in a real game scenario. And this is what I'm seeing. This is what I'm feeling. So if hmm. this, is, this is just a tip of the iceberg of where, where this Tottenham team and where this squad can go. Ricky, let's talk about the starting eleven. Of course, uh, none of the six brand new signings were in the starting eleven, as Leo said. Hugo Lloris in goal, back three of uh, Romero, Dyer, Davis, wing backs Sessegnon and Royale, in midfield Benton Kerr and Oybier, forward three of Kulusevski, Hudden Minson and Harry Kane. Now, Antonio Conte in his press conference after the game said, "I trust a lot in my old players. I think I use common sense." Um, did you expect any of the new signings to be uh, starting today? Because I've got to admit. I expected Ivan Perisic to, to play. Yeah. I didn't expect any of the others, um, but I expected Perisic to play. But Sessegnon had a fantastic game today. Well, I'm exactly the same as you, Chris. I thought if any one of them were going to start, it was going to be Perisic. But the fact that he started Sessegnon and he's had such a great game and scored as well. Do you know what I mean? Not just a, not just a great Sessegnon, game. Sessegnon, sorry. Uh, Sess, sorry, yeah. my bad, yeah. The fact that Sess has, has played great and scored, I mean, that's that's going to do wonders for his confidence. That's going to do wonders for the belief in him from a fan, fan's perspective. So, yeah, I was a little bit surprised that Perisic didn't start. But what I've got to say is exactly what we said there. Look, Conte at this point, these, these 11 have been under him for seven months. They're the fittest right now. They're the ones that know his system inside backwards right now. So he's trusting them. You've got the shirt. It's up to the others to take the shirt off of you. So what are you going to do? So that same 11 that we might be bored with, for instance, we might be like, oh, why didn't nobody start? Well, they've started and they've put in a different, they've, they've put in a different level of performance because they've got people behind them pushing them left, right and centre. If they well don't drilled. put everything in, if they don't put everything in today, you know that they're out versus Chelsea. So this is where we're at right now. It's an exciting time, Chris. It's a super exciting time. 
We Love haven't it. even started yet, mate. We haven't started <laughs> yet. Rick, are you getting carried away? Me, me get ca- would I do that, Chris? Would I get ca- would I get carried away? I, I see a bit. Is there a bit there? What's that? I think uh, Ricky and I is- always get carried away. <laughs> Medicine. Listen, if you can't get carried away as a football fan and put you your passion to. and put your, and put your heart on the line, what's the point? What's the well, point? So I'm well, all in. Antonio Conte has told people to start dreaming and uh, he is a dreamer and he's told us to be dreamers as well. So I'm dreaming about trophies coming down that high road. Hopefully it will happen. Um, After today's game, Antonio Conte also said we are working to implement our football knowledge and we have seen uh, today a team seven months of work. Um, I can now go in another step on that. Um, Richard, let's come to you. Um, Starting 11 today, happy? Yeah, yeah. like I just, I just said uh, that I just well drilled, uh, great in possession. Um, you could tell that that Conte is implementing certain things in certain positions, shapes with players, overlaps, etc. Um, Benzenko, like Leo said, very good today. Hoyerberg, where some fans love him, some fans are still a little bit unsure, but also played okay today. Davis, great. Like, I would say it was more than a 7 out of 10 uh, today. Uh, very reassured. Um, there's players that have stepped up under Conte, and I think they're start- Conte's now challenging them to the next level. And that's what's really, really kind of, I'm looking forward to see how the players then step up this season towards as maybe winning a, a, a trophy. Uh, starting 11-wise, I, was, I actually called that starting 11. I thought he would have gone with, what he can, what he knows, what he can trust, and also that he's had a lot of time on the training uh, field with the other guys. Again, uh, what Ricky said will, I believe, slowly get integrated into the team. Well, other results in the Premier League today: uh, Fulham two, Liverpool two, uh, Bournemouth two, Aston Villa nil, Leeds two, Wolves one, Newcastle two, Nottingham Forest nil, and of course Tottenham winning four one against Southampton. Everton and Chelsea are playing at the moment, which I believe is still nil nil. Um, Leo, let's come to you. Same question on the starting eleven: Is it what you expected? Um, did you expect to see uh, the new signings get more minutes today? Were you disappointed by that, or, or, or did Antonio Conte do exactly what you thought? Well, no, you know, I saw the lineup um, just before kickoff, and I was surprised that none of the signings came in. You know, I thought at least a couple of them would have would have started. Um, I understood that um, obviously Skip is injured, but Basuma had a bit of a knock, so I, I probably expected he might not be able to start. But I thought at least uh, Perisic was going to start. But um, when I saw the lineup, to be honest, you know, I saw I <laughs> I don't know, but I don't know about you guys, but I've not really been a, a fan of Sessignon. Um um, and, you know, he's, he's kind of had a very stop-start career at Spurs, you know, and he's been mm-hmm. coming in and not really playing well. And, you know, I didn't, when I saw him on the uh, start, and I was like, hmm, you know, but again, you know, it's Conte. Conte knows what he's doing. He's obviously obviously been working hard with them to get them for the first game, and he knows that we have to win this game. So um, I felt, well, okay, if, if Conte, if this, if, the, if this is the team that Conte is picking, then, you know, we have to go for it. Um, the first half, you know, like I said, was a bit was a bit slow. But um, you know, we we you know when we, we when we uh, when we kind of settled down, like I said, we picked it up and then we just we ran with it, man. And you know, again, it's like you know, I, I if it was me, I would have probably started with Perisic and stuff like that. But I'm not Conte, you know. Um, Conte is a serial wiener, so we have to, <laughs> we, have to we have to let him do what he does and just enjoy sure. it and dream. <laughs> Isn't it nice, though, know, the, the, the fact that you've said that you didn't like Sessegnon, isn't it nice the fact that he had a fantastic game today, uh, yeah. where, where competition has now come in in this summer window? Um, of course, on the right uh, wing-back side, um, you know, competition there. So Emerson Royale has played well. Competition with Richarlison coming in now for Dejan Kulishevsky. He's had a fantastic game. Is this the fact that there's competition now uh, for places where it's actually pushing them harder uh, to Is play better? Or is it just, again, improvements under Conte because he's a world-class manager? Well, I think it's a bit of both, you know. I think in, in obviously, training with a world-class manager, you definitely have you have to improve. If you're not going to improve with a world-class manager, then, then you should put your boots and go and start baking. You know what I'm saying? So, <laughs> no, seriously, because, because you're having a laugh, you know. You've had seven months 
under a, a, a guy like that, decorated um, guy, you have to improve. So that's aspects of things, definitely. And then obviously uh, we're human, you know, uh, to, to feel that, you know, there's competition. Someone's coming to take your spot. It's definitely going to spur you on. And Sessegnon had a, 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 one of his best games, you know. He was bombing up and down. He was, you know, he the, even in the second half when he took the chance and just slotted, even though he was offside, but the goal, he's, the second goal that he scored was fantastic it was a great finish you know he, he was he was he was always um free on, on on the flanks and it just shows you that work effort that you know these guys are putting in to be able to defend and attack and being be in the right positions at the right time when you know we get the ball and then we want to put it left or put it right they're always there you know so he had a fantastic game and on the and on the right hand side with with royale Again, he had a fantastic game today. The best, I, you know, I'm, I'm the one that's always been cussing Royale, you know, the royal flop, you know, the royal flush. That's what I always used to call him, you know. But today, you know, he, he played really good. You know, he was pressing. He was, he was, you know, his, his, um, the, the challenge, the competition that he was having with, was it, is it Jem Bayer for Jem, Jem, what's it, the, uh, the, the, the wing back for? Um, Mora, no, no, no. no, no, I'm talking about his, his, um, his, you know, he was, he was, he was his competition where he was, um, uh, playing with on the on the right hand side. Was it Jemba, Jenda, the place for the place for Southampton? Oh, Jed Spence. Not Jed Spence. Spence. No, I'm not talking about Spence player. I'm talking about <laughs> Southampton player. Oh, the Spence. The, yeah, I can't name, you know who I'm talking about. There's anyway. no point asking Ricky. He's still in Watford. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, my, my point is this. Um, Royer had a great game. He, there was even a point where, you know, even the, his touches, he felt like he had confidence. You know, that's the guy. You know, yeah, you know, the battle between the, both of them was really good, you know, and, and he really, he, he really bossed that. You know, he really um, bossed, he won that battle, you know. And there was even a minute, there was a, some, a, a point where Royale, you know, he, he got the ball on the right and he, he kind of stopped it. And then he did a no-look pass. And I was like, oh, there's the, there's the guy coming out now. You know, and hopefully we can see him, we can see the potential that, you know, he was supposed to have. Maybe this season we can see him really flourish. Because, you know, they say it takes you know, 18 months for, for some players to kind of bed in. So let's hope that this is the season where he really shines. And definitely with, with um, we're, <laughs> we're going to hear about that. <laughs> and definitely with, with, um, with the seven months with Conte, plus the fact that we've, he's got competition, the whole team has to rise. So yeah, uh, it was fantastic. You, I think, you know I think what, you... though, sorry, Rich, sorry. Oh, but you no, know no, what, Sessignon, there are so, there, there's so much pressure on Sessignon right now. Not only is this supposed to be his season, yeah, but Conte has backed him. He's put a lot of faith into, into Sessegnon. And not only that, we're getting rid of Regulon because of Sessegnon. Plus, we've got Perisic, who's come in as the experienced head of, a, ahead of him. Do you know what I mean? Mm. So there's so much pressure. You know, Conte's really backed himself into a corner with Sessegnon right now. I know we're on the verge of signing Udoji, Destiny, from Italy. But, but at the same time, he's put so much pressure and so much faith into Sessegnon, that Sessegnon has to have a fantastic season. He's, he's given Sess everything he needs for him everything. to flourish this season. So we need to see that. Do you, you know what I mean? And it's the same with Royal. The fact that I, I said that last year, it, it only just got there. It takes a minute for him to, to, you know, integrate, learn the language. He said he loves to learn the language to understand not just his teammates, but to understand what's happening on the pitch. And now that he's been pushed, with Doherty, with Lucas Mora, with a possible uh, another addition that comes in, Spence as well. Do you know what I mean? There's a lot of pressure on Royale to perform. So like Conte said the other day about keeping the wing backs happy, he's like, they've got to keep me happy. And I yeah. love that. I love that. And this, this is how it starts. It starts from today. Ricky, how did you feel when Spurs went 1-0 down? Because um, Southampton had a chance in the third minute. Uh, Ward-Prowse um, free kick into the box, just headed wide. And in the 12th minute, Ward-Prowse, their star man, put them 1-0 up. Were you worried at that time? Because I'll tell you what, I was sat in the stadium. We went 1-0 down and I thought, OK, we've gone 1-0 down. It's about character now. It's about how we come back. And when you look at our forward line, you look at our team. You know, it's, it's of real quality, even though none of the, the, uh, the new signings were in the starting eleven. You look throughout the team, there is real quality. And of course, a ver you know, a very, very good, strong bench now as well. Were you worried at that point going 1-0 down? Not at all. Like the boys, like the boys, I was totally calm. The, the, the fact that Conte's got his hands on this team, 
and I can see the belief. You saw it in preseason, Chris. You went yeah. everywhere with, with them on preseason, and you saw that the 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 confidence increasing and the belief increasing. And this is why I actually was happy with um, the Roma loss that happened last week because I my dad has always said it. We always need one little loss in preseason just to make sure that people don't get ahead of themselves. They don't start believing their own hype. Do you know what I mean? To make sure that you know that it's not going to come easy. You still have to work to get your result. So to see that today, you know, all right, we went one nil down. All I could hear when I saw Ward Prowse scored it, Chris, all I could hear was Costa in my head saying, see, I told you, Ward Prowse, I told you, we should have bought him. I told you, I knew he yeah. was going to score. I told, that's, I could, bro, I was cracking up to myself because I just had Anthony Costa in my head, mate. Do you know what I mean? So, But no, I had no worries whatsoever. Conte is the man and he knows what to do. And especially with five subs as well, we've got so many people on that bench now that can change a game. Going one nil down is not a worry anymore. I've got belief in what they're doing and they have too which is it's just next level right now rick how, how excited actually are you on on a serious note how excited <laughs> are you for this season he's all right <laughs> bro i haven't been this excited since potch honestly like when when we was under potch i believed in every single game i don't care who we went up against and i don't care how unlikely the odds said it was for us to win i always believed we could win then we went for a period under uh, under Mourinho, which was, you know, it was what it was. Then we had Nuno, you know, that was what it was, you know. And I, I thought we were sinking. I said it whenever it, uh, you know, a couple of seasons ago. I said we were Titanic FC. The only thing that we were doing was sinking. But right now, I am super excited. Ever since Conte came in, I said it then. We are back. We are back to fighting we are back to believing we are back to challenging we are back to show the league that we're a team to be worried about oh. they're not going to be singing tottenham get better this year let me tell you they're not singing that tune this year they're going to be singing about every other team that we face they get battered every time tottenham turn up let me tell you so i am super excited bro this is just the tip of the iceberg this is just the beginning and I can't wait. I, I, I couldn't wait for today. And I couldn't wait for the season to start. And I'm just so happy that we're here. Rick, how, how far, though, do you think Antonio Conte can actually push this team? Because, um, you know, he talks about the, uh, you know, Manchester City and Liverpool being that far ahead, uh, you know, about, about that gap. You know, what he said in his press conference. Um, do you really believe that, that he thinks that? Or do you think that there is a... You know something in him where he, where he thinks that Spurs could actually challenge for the Premier League, or am I getting carried away? Listen, I, I think Conte is always looking to be number one in whatever competition he's in. If he was in, you know, uh, I don't even I don't want to say the swear word. It's because I've been bloody well drinking. But if he was in a wee wee contest, he'd, <laughs> he'd want to win. Do you know what I mean? So he he wants to win, bro. He's looking at the league. He's looking at it. He's trying to keep some of our feet on the floor while we're dreaming. He's just trying to, you know, and he's trying to challenge the players to kind of go, look, that's the level. Can you reach it? But let me tell you, he even said it in the press conference the other day that he's looking, why not the Premier League? Why not the Champions League? When I, one of the reporters asked him, like, what do you expect to win? Do you reckon you can get full for the League Cup? He's like, why not the Premier League? Why not the Champions League? So I'm telling you now, I know it, I can feel it in my bones, that he is going to aim for the top of the Premier League. However unlikely it is, he is going to aim to win the Champions League and every comp cup competition that we are in. That's what the squad he's building is for right now. So, bro, like I say, this is just the beginning. It's exciting times. And and I have like like confidence from head to toe that he's going to achieve something this season. Well, Ricky, thanks so much for joining us because I know you're only with us for the first half hour of this show. Uh, and Unfortunately. Like the, Hotspur, like the Tottenham Hotspur squad, we have a very good squad as well. So uh, <laughs> I'm new out for Melvin. Melvin will be coming in now. So thanks for joining us and uh, hopefully you can be well, you're back next week. Cheers, have, a, have, have a great show, boys. Rich, lovely to see you. Leo, lovely to see you. Melvin, up, can't wait for you to be subbed on, my friend. You have a great show. Chris, <laughs> you're the man, my friend. You're the man, mate. You take care, boys. Nice Cheers, one. Rippy. Come on, Spurs. Come on. <laughs> Let's get Melvin in. Melvin, how are you? Good. 
I'm very happy. Uh, your, your thoughts on today's game? Um, brilliant. You know, brilliant reaction going from one nil down. Um, you know, the, the lineup, you don't change a winning team. We were, we won 10 out of 14 matches in, in last season. And, and the way you have to reward those guys, you have to keep them on same lineup and, um, and the new boys have to, have to fight and have to deserve that spot. And, uh, and, and the, the, the patterns of play that we're playing this season and, and this, this game was, was amazing. You know, it was a bit rusty. Son and Kane didn't score, but the others did. And it's, it's amazing. Four goals. You expect Son and Kane to get most of them, but they didn't, yeah. which is brilliant. On another day, we could have had eight or nine. I was telling, you know, my brother was next to me. We should have been five, five nil up. Um, short character going from one nil down to score right away, and and uh, with Cess and Dyer, you know, two players that stepped up in the first game of the season, something that um, we've been crying for so long. And I'm a fan of both of them, and and Cess, I'm really excited to see what he does this season. You know, um, he's a talented boy, and uh, I just have to remind everyone that you know Bale didn't have the best start at Spurs, and look how. You know, he kicked on season after season. Sassanion has the right, you know, talent and attributes to to be a very, very good player. And then um, learning from Perisic in that position, you know, already with a goal and he nearly scored another one. Well, he did score another one, but was ruled off of, offside. Mm. So it's going to be interesting. You know, two players that last season didn't score a single goal and both of them already have won. And... Um, and last season we also lost this game, and now and now we won it. So we start started off on on a brilliant foot, you know, the right direction, and we're top top of the league. So top so of amazing. league, you know, I'll sleep Doesn't so so well, well tonight. I'll sleep. Yeah, yeah. I'll have an amazing sleep when when we're top. <laughs> Richard, let's come to you um, now. A player that we've spoken about a little bit already, Ryan Sessignon, really impressed me today. Um, you know, in the sixteenth minute. He put a great cross in. It was headed away for a corner. Uh, then in the 20th minute, another cross was put in, this time from Rodrigo Benton Kerr. Carl Walker-Peters blocked uh, for a corner. And then on the 21st minute, just nine minutes after conceding uh, the goal, uh, we equalised through Ryan Sessignon with a great header. DJ Kuliszewski uh, with a fantastic cross. Um, what did you make of Ryan Sessignon? And, uh, you know, like Leo said, um, you know, a lot of Spurs fans haven't been his number one fan, but you know, pre-season under Antonio Conte, it seems that he's improved these players yet again. Yeah, and obviously uh, Conte's uh, real thing is around learning on the training pitch, uh, <laughs> learning those new performance environment. And you can tell with even that short amount of time through the limited time in training, he's had that impact around confidence, around the behaviours of Cess from last year. I think when we last spoke, I was, I was looking for a change in um, Emerson and Cess's behaviours when they're on the ball. So that positivity driving forwards and getting those really good crosses in. Today we saw the benefits of not only uh, the support of Conte, but also the consistency of games under Conte. Uh, and Conte somebody that... Um, wants that reliability, uh, but also puts that real trust into the players. Um, today, Cess really came to the fall as a, as a player within his position. And I'm sure him and Perisic are going to have that, that good kind of combination of maybe uh, playing one game and then switching up depending on uh, fatigue levels, etc., or just supporting each other. Um, and that's what obviously... Uh, Conte's looking for on the other side. I think Cess did have a couple of opportunities today. Um, yep. But, like I say, the perfect ball for, for Kuliczewski. And it was, he, he needed to finish that for confidence-wise. Hopefully he can kick on in the, uh, in the goals um, area. But I also think today was more about on the ball, what he was doing on the ball. And it really did excite me. I think it was very positive. Uh, it was forward thinking and defensively is very good today as well. Do you know what though, Rich? When we did these uh, Spurs chat shows um, last season, all of us sat here and said, we will all be very surprised if we still have the same wing backs going into the brand new season. Yeah. And we have. 
Yeah, yeah, for sure. For sure. And that's Conte though, isn't it? It's Conte. He's, he's got his philosophy um, within the team uh, and he backs himself. He backs the players. He backs himself with his demeanour, with his messaging. It's all about the team. Um, and obviously with the wing-backs being so pinnacle to how we play, there's a reason why the two guys are, are in the team still. And obviously going back to the last season and the last 10 games and how we were kind of building consistency, building confidence, that's now gone from last season into this season. So why are you going to change the team? Whether you bought four or five new players or not, why are you going to change the team? The team, team's a winning team. Um, the levels are going to raise with obviously the, the new players. And we're going to have yeah. better weapons on the bench as well for the five substitutes that we can have. Leo, let's come to you. Um, in the 31st minute, Hun Min Son nearly put Spurs 2-1 up, but the goalkeeper saved it. Um, and then just moments later, Hun Min Son assisted um, Eric Dyer uh, for a fantastic header. Um, a great move again from Tottenham. And at that point, I thought the goals are just going to be coming um, because Spurs look very threatening. Yeah, absolutely, man. You know, I wasn't really, you know, uh, too b f f flustered when we went 1-0 down. I knew that we had a lot of um, power, firepower in the team to to bring us back even, you know, one nil down. You know, we, we had Kane, we had Son, and these guys, you know, hadn't even touched the ball really for the first 10, 50, 10 20 minutes, you know. But, you know, once, you know, you, um, Son got the ball, you saw the quality. You saw when once he started getting on the ball, things started moving. He had the, the shot, um, which... You know, was it the, the hand where they claimed to have the handball situation? I don't know if that was right, but you know, and then you know, his, his the, the, the way that he whips the ball in and we applying the pressure. You know, when he got on the ball, the, the, the few moments he got on the ball, it was just quality. You know, he, he looked sharp, he had a pace on him when he got the ball, he was running at the defenders, you know, and even with Kane, that with the little m m touches that he had, he looked very strong, you know, he, he, he looked very composed, he was still able to. Get, get some passes off, you know? And, you know, like I said, both of them didn't even score, but we definitely, um, you know, I, I I didn't feel like we were, we were, we were too um, overrun at all. I think we were totally in control of that game throughout the whole 90 minutes. Um, and, you know, the goal from, uh, the, the, the cross from Son and, and the header, the flick from, um, from Dyer was fantastic. And, you know, this is what I, I expect with Dyer, with, especially with, with a head that size, you know, he should be scoring more goals, you know, um, he was, and, and he does that, you know, he, he's, he's tried that several times. I've seen him do it, you know, and he, he is a defender. He gets up there, him and Romero get up there. And, you know, I, I believe with this system that Conte is playing, you know, they're going to be getting in the box more and, you know, getting on the end of these things, you know, and, and it's, it's, you know, I can't wait, to see how this season pans out, you know, because finally, you know, with with what Richard was saying about how how, how the win backs are so pivotal and and, and important in Conte system, you know, we were kind of lacking that, that 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 the ball coming in, the whipping of the balls, and we saw that fantastically um, with with Kulusevski's um, ball in to to um, Sessignon to head in. It was it was amazing, and if you, if you watch it in slow mo, a match of the day today when Kulusevski just whips that ball in like you see there's a split second where his whole body is in the air and you could just take a, a, a shot it's just so beautiful he whipped it in bullet header and this is what we're going to be seeing a lot more because we had we 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 kind of saw that potential last season where we were getting into those great positions but the final ball was just a bit lacking you know people weren't really there at the end of it but you know, it, it's just one. It's, again, it's, it's it's um it's the one game of the season. But however, you know, I want we've been scoring a lot of goals. You know, and if you want to start calculating all the goals that we've been scoring from the back end of last season, the last four or five games, maybe you should ask your viewers in the chat if they can find out how many goals we've scored in the last four or five Premier League games. We, we've definitely passed over twenty now, right? And it's just fantastic. And I mean, it was it was it was just a fantastic watch today, and, and I was I was really 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 happy with the turnout. Leo, it's been a while since you've been um, on the show. Um, how yeah. how excited are you for this coming season with what you've seen in pre season and of course the six uh, summer signings? Well, listen, what, my what, can, what can we realistically achieve? Well, let, let me tell you straight. My my excitement started last season when I when I was on the, and I said, listen, if we get top four. 
it is a wrap because Conte, trust me, once we get Champions League, Conte is going to get backed. And if Conte is going to get backed, we are going to have a fantastic summer. We're going to sign the players that we want. And, and come this season, we are going to be challenging for everything. I, you know, I honestly believe that we're going to be challenging for the title. And I, you know, and I won't be surprised if we if it goes to the wire. I won't be surprised if we win it. I'm telling, and yes, and I said that because that's how excited I am. Yeah, I, I said it. I believe we could win the league this season, hundred percent. Because you know, yes, I, yeah, yeah, he wanted. To, I'm saying it because you know, Chelsea, I believe, ain't going to be as strong this season. Um, you know, Man United are pretty much out of the picture. Liverpool have lost, uh, you know, a Mane who, for me, is probably their, 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 their um, you know, catalyst in, in, in their attack, the way that they press and, and their power. I mean, they drew today. I mean, it's, again, it's the first game of the season, but, you know, um, you know, I don't think Liverpool are going to be as strong. Um, as for Man City, you know, Man City or Man City, but, you know, is Man City going to win it five or six times in a row? Come on. You know, plus we, we did the double on them. And, you know, the thing I've got to say is we did Spurs against the top four. We were in the mix. You know, we didn't lose to Liverpool. We didn't lose to Man City. You know, we're in the mix with the big boys now. So it's all about consistency for us. It's all about whether we can do, be consistent with the lesser teams. That's where we were in the league. Not necessarily doing the head-to-heads with the top teams. It's how we are consistent with the lesser teams. And, and I believe that Conte, with the squad depth that we have, with the, with, the, with, the, with the fact that we have five subs, the fact that we have content, I believe, honestly, that we are ch- going to be challenging for the league this season. I definitely believe we're going to, be, we're going to win a, a trophy this season. Yeah, and I'm, I'm saying it, we're going to win the league. I said it. I've said it. And I, I want to say it. I really want to say it because when are you going to say it? When you, uh, at, at what time, it, in a, as being a Spurs fan, Chris, are you, going to, are you going to make a prediction that you're going to win the league? Isn't it, well, is, isn't it now? Let, let, let me ask Richard and Melvin, just a very quick yes or no from both of you. Is Leo getting carried away? <laughs> but what is Leo drinking? That's what I want to know. I'm drinking that? water. A, I'm drinking... Is is that's, that's, that's definitely gin. <laughs> a pint of gin there. It's water. My thoughts are Leo, pure. Pure. I can fi- I can feel the energy through the computer screen. Yeah, you know, at the moment it's it's confidence. I'm not sure if it's overconfidence, but uh, when you look at some of the teams that uh, we go up against, I, I definitely agree with you regarding Liverpool. And uh, for me, I think Mane is a massive loss, like massive loss. And um, Man City, I think maybe have sold some of the players that some of their. <laughs> so, even even my little boy's getting um, carried away. He knows. <laughs> he, he knows. knows he knows. Up. But but I think I think Chelsea. I think Man City. Same old, same old. I think we really. In the background, is is been watching the game today. He knows that Spurs have got a chance. But yeah. have we got what it takes? Have we got the weapons to challenge? And I, I, I think we need to four or five games. <laughs> into the league, then not just today at Southampton. I think Southampton, it's, it's a nice introduction into the season. Uh, for me, I think, obviously, against the Chelsea's of this world, we'll see actually how much we've progressed from last season. But yeah. do, you th- do you think that with, with Chelsea, though, Chelsea are, are losing, you know, what's going on in Chelsea right now? Is Chelsea the same team as they were last season? Are we, you know, you know if we beat them next week, are we beating the Chelsea of last season? Or are we just beating a lesser Chelsea team? Well, I don't think they're a lesser Chelsea team. You look at some of the signings they've got. They're not to be sniffed at all. They're like Sterling for one. Um, obviously, going to those boys, he's going to add. He's going to add some real quality in those attacking uh, positions. But also defensively, they're starting to really build a, a strong team. But I, I think we're going to be competitive. I've got some kind of confidence. I'm not sure if we win the league. We'll definitely be either second or third for sure. What about cups? Let, 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 about... let me bring Mel. Let me bring Melvin. In. Do, <laughs> what about do, the cups? You love it, <laughs> Melvin. Do you think that Leo is being a little bit overconfident? Um, you have to aim high. I mean, last season we sat here after a victory, and there was someone on the panel and telling us we're going to finish tenth. So, telling us we're going to win the league, I rather hear. I rather hear that <laughs> than yeah. you know. You know what I mean? But it's it's obviously nice to hear, and and you obviously you have good reasons why we can win the league but it's very difficult it's very difficult but 
Conte, I think we've in a way we're a bit of a sleeping giant. We've not seen exactly what what potential we can achieve yet. I think we're just hitting. You know, you know, the, we're starting to see it. We, we, you know, we all spoke about these things all summer. You know, the Conte preseason, and, and and he knows how to get over the line. And you know, we're dealing as well with two, you know, world class managers with with Klopp and Guardiola. You know, those are the two teams we have to be fighting with. And then, yeah. um, I think we do have world class players. It's it's um, how he manages European and, and and cup competitions because you could see. Our starting lineup is very, very good, and um, our you know starting eleven. But it's when he starts to rotate players in and out is where I start to worry a little bit because um, this cohesion, this cohesion team that we have right now, the, the team is very good. It's it's a bit fluid and it's very and and the, the patterns of play that we have. But I just worry when you start bringing in four or five different players, how well we will do, how well they will gel, and. Um, there's going to be a bit of learning curve to it. And, um, you know, last season, from our first five fixtures, we we lost four of them. So if we manage today, we already gained three points that we didn't have last season. If we can beat or get a result against Chelsea and, and West Ham and, and Wolves, that's already, you know, close to 12 points that we didn't have last season. I mean, we did so, beat Man City first game of the season, didn't we? No, I mean, yeah. fixture for fixture, like we lost against Wolves at home. We lost against Chelsea away. We okay. lost against West Ham away. And it's just, it's these fixtures that, that last season we dropped points. We need to we need to start gaining points. And and you start to increase and go up in the table if, if, if the, you change these fixtures. And you're always going to draw... And lose that that odd game, you know. Even under Pochettino in the 16-17 season, we dropped some silly points. But if we if we get if we get a really good home record and improve our away record this season, my Hello? aim this season mm. is to improve on on that season on on the Pochettino 16-17. Yeah. If we can go higher than 60, sorry, 86 points, it's already a massive achievement. But that's that's how the, and the next season you say okay now we have to push for the league but you have to walk before you can run and i think last season you know we learned a bit how to walk and now we're jogging you know what i mean it's like it's it's not going to be we're not going to challenge for the league straight away but we we know for sure that conte will be saying to the players i want to win the league he, you, you just know because that's he has that mentality and and it, Italians are, in a way, very proud people, and and they have a bit of, you know, steel in in their character that they want to win. If he feels that he cannot win the league, you know, at this point of the season, he he, he probably feels like he can, like just like last season, he thought he can achieve top four with 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 that squad that we had, the squad that we thought was hopeless and we we needed to get rid of most of the players, but he he managed he managed to find some 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 good performances out of them. So we, we just build result one after one and we see where we go this season. You know, um, last last year, I think you posted the Nuno uh, press conference and yeah. uh, it just, it's, it's a year later and, and uh, we still haven't had a full year under Antonio Conte and we're talking yeah. about challenging for the league and we're yeah. talking about you know all these the investment from Enoch and 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 all the signings that we're bringing in and what I'm what I like as well sorry a bit going off topic but we're buying young players for the future as well not just players for now we're buying players who are gems for the future and if not all of them work out one of them or two of them will you know this player that we're we're signing from Italy he looks quite good and I'm and I'm excited the direction of the club and um I'm just going to support them every single second at every at every game, and and uh, I'm I'm excited and and I'm happy, and and I uh, like I said before, I'll go to sleep really really well, with knowing that we're on top of the Premier League right now, and hopefully next week, you know that will be the the biggest test next week. If if we beat Chelsea two or three nil or or two or three to one, then I'll I'll be on, on Leo's page. I I I'll think we'll <laughs> win the league honestly because if we be, if we beat Chelsea away. If yeah. we beat Chelsea away and we keep a clean sheet, for example, or 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 win three three one, Melvin, that's, that's, I'll, that's I'll a... take any win. I don't care what what the scoreline is, even if it's five four. 
I'll take yeah, it. Exactly. So, go, exactly. Go, going, to, going to Stamford Bridge year in, year out, and only having one win in 30 years. Oh, it must be pain. We, we will talk about this game at the end of the show, but that is a very, very difficult place to go. And I agree with you. If we get a result next week at Stamford Bridge against Chelsea, then I think that um, I'm going to be... Uh, you know, very exciting. I think people are going to probably need to calm me down next week if that happens. Um, <laughs> you be saying Champions League, we're winning. Uh, if we win, that, we're winning the lot, yeah. Um, Rick, <laughs> let's come to you. Um, what do you make of Hunmin Son's performance today? Because in the 38th minute, he rolled it to Ben Davis. Ben Davis uh, had a long-range shot. Goalkeeper saved. Um, and then just before half-time, he seemed to do all of the hard work. Um, and then when he got his shot in, he put it over the bar, unlike him. Yeah, very much uh, so. I think his his performance was, I don't know, was he trying too hard? Was he trying to impress? Was he trying to get back that uh, form that he had at the end of last season? I just think um, that because the team generally was playing very well, his, his role slightly changed today. Um, I think when that, when that chance comes, He's not going to snatch it. It's just going to happen uh, organically and naturally. Um, I think also, it's it's great that we did score four goals and, and uh, Sonny and Harry didn't score, to be honest. Um, obviously, I'd, I'd like it to be five or six, but uh, am I concerned about that? No, because clearly he's going to get chances in the future. Um, Sonny is somebody that works off confidence, clearly. Um, he loves scoring goals. He loves that kind of... Um, um, partnership with Harry um, today I don't think it really clicked that was one of the things I was I was kind of looking for um, and I think just Sonny was trying to force it instead of just naturally happen he was because he wasn't getting into those positions where he had those chances Seth had one obviously Kulicheski obviously scored his Sonny and Harry didn't really have those clear cut chances that, that um, the other guys had I think that's going to come in the in the uh, coming weeks yeah, I think Spurs fans were just really happy with the performance generally and, and to know that, that Harry and, and Sonny didn't have to score the goals that we can have have them from, like Leo was saying, from the back and from other positions. It's, it's really important that everybody contributes this year. Got a lot of games in the Champions League and the league. Um, what One thing, I, just going back a step, you know, one thing that I was really impressed with, and, and especially with looking at the team, last season... Sometimes I actually thought, what is our plan B? What is yeah. our plan B in the team? Where this year, I'm going, Perisic and come on, he can play various different positions. Morgan could come on and kind of have that energy up front. There's five or six players that can dynamically like chop and change into different positions. Um, and going away to like a Burnley on a Thursday night won't be as kind of tedious as last season. I think we what we need to really do is we need to have be consistent at home, have that fortress, and then when we go away, let's enforce ourselves on on teams, and let's let's show the teams that we've got not just a plan B and A and B, but also bring people off the bench like Richarlison when he's available, and obviously be dominant in other areas. It's very exciting after today, to be honest. It is, and uh, and Leo, as I said at the uh, at the start of the show. Uh, we scored four goals today, but it should have been a lot more, shouldn't it? Absolutely, man. We had, you know, we should. I, I won't be. I was thinking we were probably going to have about six or possibly even seven goals the way we were playing. Um, even in, immediately in the second half, when um, I think it was Son, he put uh, a Cessignon through, and Cessignon just right foot finished it. You know, he was just, he was offside, but um, yeah. we started fast. We start. We were on the front foot of the second half. You know, the way we were playing, we, you know, it, we, we, I thought we were going to probably get like six or seven. Kane had a shot point blank that was amazing, that was saved. Um, yeah. I don't know how the keepers got down to save it, but that was saved. Um, you know, it, 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 we, we, we literally dominated that game, you know. And if, if, if they had lost six or seven, no one would have said, I thought, oh, that was a surprise thing. We, we thoroughly dominated every aspect of that game. And, and, um, you know, it's a shame that obviously Kane and Son, I'm sure, you know, they always say with, with players, when you score such a, a high scoring game like that and you don't get on the score sheet, it must, they must be bummed, pissed off in the changing room. Keep them hungry. Keep them you hungry, know? though. But, Keep you know, it's just, 
Exactly, especially at the fact that you know um, Salah Salah scored today, so I'm sure that that's got in the back of the mind, thinking, "Oh God, Salah's already one up for the Golden Boot." So you know, I'm sure he's going to make them more hungry, and especially coming at the right time for next week with um, with Chelsea, and ho hopefully um, Kane can put in that performance where you know where he literally battered Chelsea um, and scored those goals. You know, I hope you know Kane Kane really comes to. Uh, to fire with that, um, yeah, man, we could we could have we could have done a, a good number on, on Southampton today. Then the fact that they did the, the they did a double on us last season, so it was good to get that revenge. <laughs> it was good, you know. And four one, great score. Um, shame that we conceded the, the the one goal. I did predict three nil with you, Chris, earlier this week, didn't I? Um, yeah. I knew it was going to be a high scoring game, but we'll take four one. You know, I don't mind conceding if if we get four. But yeah, I'll have that. No worries. <laughs> yeah, a good win, a good result. Yeah. Um, Melvin, let's come to you. Let's talk about Tottenham's third goal uh, because uh, we've said how good Ryan Sessegnon was today. Um, equally so, Emerson Royale on the right. Um, he had a header that went just wide in the 50th minute and in the 63rd, 61st minute, sorry, um, it went down as an own goal. But excellent work from Emerson Royale for our third. Yeah, he's not he's not done much wrong. He's solid, but. Um... Yeah, he's improving, uh, you know, in the attacking phases of the game. But uh, he's obviously not as um, it's not, it doesn't come naturally to him like as much as Sassignon. I think Sassignon was more of a winger maybe in his youth days, or he's more experienced with scoring goals regularly. But yeah, he's he's solid. I think out of the three, he's probably. Conte's favorite. He might he might not be a fan favorite, and ever, everyone want, wanted him to be sold but you know he's still 22 years old he's his second season in, in the league and uh under his second manager and uh yeah i think he'll do he'll do okay he'll he'll probably have one or two mistakes this season but i think overall he's still a decent solid player and um and he'll he'll improve he'll, he'll definitely improve more i think his shooting could could improve as well i think he's not he doesn't strike the ball as clean i mean it's, it's i can compare out, yeah, 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 Royal. I, th I think I think if you look at Serge Aurier, I think he for for a winger, for 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 a right back, he he could hit the ball pretty well. I think he needs to improve that side of the game. He can get into certain positions, and you, you say shoot, shoot, and, and, or even and just cross. either. Or yeah, even or, even, or even I think he's improving his decision making a little bit. You can tell that they practice these things, and Conte is telling him. You yeah. need to be looking for Kane or Son here. If you, they, they, they definitely work on these things because, you know, Conte is a set plays kind of guy, and he creates with the fullbacks. And um, I think game after game he'll improve. Obviously, if if he's in in Conte's plans, we don't know. But I, I think he is, and I think we won't be selling him this season. I think he'll keep all of the fullbacks that we currently have, other than maybe Regulon and. Um, because the rest they can rotate in and out of the team they know the system well and even Dorothy was was unlucky with his injury because i think he he came into fine fine form last season and, and he was chipping in with goals and assists i think it's important this season that all the players will have periods of the season where they come in and, and they play a vital role you know last season Dorothy certainly did that and emerson did that at the end of the season and and uh, he had performance good performances at liverpool and and these kind of places and um yeah i think he'll have a better season the last season i think i can't wait for his his uh his video on twitter his compilation you know the spurs, spurs fans love it i certainly love it when we win and uh it's just it's just a bit of humor and during the preseason i think he had like a five aside friendly somewhere in, in brazil and he did a video of that, so it's just it's just, it's just funny, and and uh, it creates a good atmosphere with the fans, and it's just stuff you like to see, and and especially when when you win and you're you're on top of the league and you're on top of Arsenal already, which is something that I particularly look out for every single season, <laughs> and um, yeah, it's it's apparently their best their best team since the Invincibles, and they only had two shots on target yesterday, so I think we had about eight or nine, so. Yeah, it, it, we'll we'll stay grounded and, and we'll keep working hard. <laughs> we're and not then, we're winning the league. We're not staying grounded. We're, <laughs> we're, 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 we're dreamers. We'll win it. We'll win. We'll win it. 
will 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 come out of nowhere will come out of nowhere and people won't expect it and and that's how and that's how we'll win it <laughs> yeah they won't well, they won't see I'm, us coming leo they won't see us coming no. i'm certainly excited rich let's let's come to you in the 63rd minute we went 4-1 up emerson royale involved in yet another goal um this time he got the assist uh dj and kuliszewski what a finish from him we've not even spoken about dj and kuliszewski keith writes on screen now kuliszewski man yeah, of the match liar. Um, actually, Rich, just before you talk about Kuliszewski, can I just ask all of you who your man of the match was? Because I'm undecided. I, I, I'm thinking Ryan Sessegnon, Emerson Royale, DJ and Kuliszewski. Um, I thought all three of them were fantastic today. Any other names that you want to put in there? Or who, who was your man of the match, the three of you? For me, um, for me, Kuliszewski was man of the match, um, hands down. Um, I really feel that Benton had a, had a solid, yeah, yeah. solid game. He was... Yes, you I know, agree. The I agree. way that he was blocking and, and challenging yeah. and just, and he was so effortless with his performance, you know, in the first yeah. ten, five, ten minutes, you know, his balls were a bit loose, but whenever he gets the ball, he's just, he's just pure class. I call him, um, I call him a Benta pure, Benta pure class. <laughs> <laughs> he's just so calming, just like one touch. He just lays it off. You know, his, his passing is, he just looks so comfortable on the ball. And um, he was crunching, he was, you know, stopping all the attacks. You know, so for me, I would, if it wasn't for Kulu, I would have given it to um, Bentacor. Sessegnor for sure had a great game. There's no doubt about that. Even Royale had a great game. Um, so for me, it would, I would, it would, it would be those four players I would have in contention. But Kulu for me is um, definitely was, uh, was, was man of the match. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just because dictated the play, um, I think um, because again, if you've got your wing backs that high up the pitch, mm. he's the one doing all the work, kind of covering as well. So he's doing a lot of motoring up and down the pitch in the in then pockets covering as well. I think off the ball, he did so much work today. Yeah. Watch a match, watch a match of the day today. I, you know, I'm sure they're going to mention it. Yeah, he was just. He was just so, solid. Yeah. And Kuliszewski obviously gets the goal, in, but yeah. um, I yeah. think Benzikor. Isn't it nice, though, how we're rattling off so many names about Man of the Match because there's so many good performances? Melvin, who would you give it to? Yeah, I, I would give it to Benzikor as well, weirdly enough. Even though Kuliszewski had the like the highlight moments with the with the passing and the, and the goals. I mean, that goal for that pass for... For Sessignon, I mean, we haven't seen a pass like that since, you know, the days of Eriksson and, and Gareth Bale and, and stuff and Van der Vaart. That kind, of, we haven't had had that kind of passing in years. You know, Lucas Moura would probably hit a, hit the cockerel on top of the stadium with that pass. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's it's so it's so nice to see. And whoever sold us Kulisevsky and Bentecure, I need to find and buy them a drink, you know, or yeah. a glass of wine, because yeah. what the, whoever what sold. The two the two Juventus rejects, you mean that we, that we were sold? Yeah, yeah. I mean, I mean, whoever gave us those players, whoever sanctioned those sales, I mean, we paid money for them. I mean, we paid quite a hefty fee for Kozewski, who's very young, who's twenty-one, by the way. You know, he's he's younger than Phil Foden, or or the same age as Phil Foden. And Kozewski is absolutely class. He's such a tidy player. He's tall. He's strong, and he works hard. He really runs. He, moves, and, uh, yeah. he covers. He covers so much ground, and he and, and in a way. He makes Hoiberg, who who picked up his performances at last season, he makes Hoiberg look a bit uh, like, come on, mate, you need to you need to do better. <laughs> yeah. yeah, you know what I mean because Absolutely. because he made him look. And I was thinking today, I was thinking in a couple of months, Basuma could win his position if if he doesn't pick it up and if he doesn't make a mistake. If he makes a mistake, um, he could lose his position to Basuma, who I can see. You know, slotting in that position really, really well and winning the ball really, really high up, because that's what's probably what was missing today. Even though Bentecur probably did it in one or two occasions where he wins the ball pretty high up, and and it doesn't take us two or three minutes to get the ball back like we used to under Jose. I remember losing the ball under Jose and and start counting <laughs> how long it would take until we get the ball back. It'd be like three minutes before we get it back. But yeah, I'll give it. To, to Bentecourt, what a player, and 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 uh, he just he's just like a silent magician. He, he's yeah. he's brilliant. Rich, going back to the original question about Dijan Kuliszewski, um, how good was he today? Yeah, left foot finish. 
was pure class. Like another brilliant finish. Um, passing, both footed, uh, drifts in um, from the right. Um, great uh, finish, obviously. Great passing, strong on the ball. Um, he's got youth on his side. Uh, it's not obviously a, a sexy signing like Diaz, but you, when you look at the what impact he's had to Spurs, I'd say it's bigger than Diaz for Liverpool. Um, for me, he's coming to the side. He's, he's given us a new dynamic in that forward line. Um, I think that's, that, that front three is going to be uh, Kane, Son and Kulisewski, even though he can play in different positions. I think Richarlison's going to have that that role where he either comes on, on from the bench or it's that interchange with maybe, maybe Kulicheski because of his age. Maybe they might look at that. But um, today, powerhouse. Like, if it wasn't for Benzikas kind of controlling the middle of the park, you'd have to go for Kulicheski. Like I say, defenders are scared to come in too close because he's so strong and left foot, right foot. They're scared to get too close because it, it just drift by them. He's not got electric pace, but he has got first three or four steps, he's able to use his strength and his low centre of gravity to move either um, down the wing or cut inside. And then like you saw today, left foot, ooh, yeah, great finish. Yeah, so pleased to see that. So Leo, let's come to you. Right? Leo, let's come to you. In the 66th minute, uh, Ryan Session went off and uh, Ivan Perisic made his competitive debut for Spurs. Um, and then in the 86th minute, Antonio Conte brought four players off, uh, put four players on. Um, Emerson, Benton Kerr, Davis and Kulusevski all coming off. And then Doherty, Basuma, Lengley and Mora all coming on. Um, going into the Chelsea game, uh, which, as I've said, you know, we've only won once at Stamford Bridge in 30 years. Wow. Um, Going into that game, what would you expect Antonio Conte to do? Will he change anything or would it be the same starting eleven as today? Bearing in mind that Richarlison will be back from suspension as well next week. Well, I don't think Richarlison is going to start. No way. I think he's going to keep the, 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 the definite top the three up front. He's definitely going to start with Son, um, Kulu and, and Kane. They're definitely going to start. Um, I think after Ben Secure's performance, I think he's definitely going to start. I think, um, you know, with Romero and Dyer, they're definitely going to start. Um, Davis is going to start, <laughs> you know. Um, if we look at Sessignon, yeah, I think Sessignon is probably going to start. Maybe he might go with Perisic. I don't know, purely for the experience, because it's such a big game. Maybe he might go with Perisic for that. However, I, w I can't... I won't be surprised if he sticks with the with the with the with the same team, you know, because it was it was a powerful, solid performance. Obviously, Chelsea is, is a different um, proposition to uh, to Southampton. So, um, I, you know, again, it's it's it's, it's gonna it's gonna be a tough one. But I think maybe he's gonna he's gonna start with that. And if anything, I think definitely players like um, you know Paris is gonna get definitely get more more minutes um, to, uh, next week. Um, also, Basuma, because just purely because of his presence and his and and, and his power, I think that's what we're gonna we're gonna really need against um, you know Chelsea. We're gonna really need presence, power um, to play them because we have to. We they did they did us both. Uh, they did home and away, isn't it? Last season, Chelsea, they 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 really did a number on us. So even in, I think they kicked us out the cup as well or something. They really just dominated Spurs. So. It's pure, pure revenge. We need revenge at, at the bridge. We need to throw them off the bridge. You know, we need to put them in a bag with stones and drop them off the bridge. That's what needs to happen. We need to come away with all the points um, next week because I've got a lot of Chelsea friends and all, I, I'm just all they do is just send me a why? I, well, this is it. I don't even know why. <laughs> I don't even know why. It's like all of a sudden I woke up one day. It's like oh. Oh, you're Chelsea as well. Oh God, you know, and like for years, you know, just the, the just abuse, abuse they've just been giving me, and watching them win the Champions League is just painful, and watching them win the league is painful. I know that they're gutted. We have Conte. I know that they can feel it. So hopefully, Conte is gonna next. I'm sure he's gonna, you know, let the guys today after the game enjoy the win. He's gonna say to the boys, "Look, guys, we've, we we did great. We played well, you know, but don't get carried away." 
um, next week we've got a big game. You see what they did to us last season. He's going to tell the boys that we need to be focused. We need to make sure that this win doesn't go off, get in our head. And, and come next week, we need to put in a big, big performance. Because like I said, if we win um, next week, I'm telling you, like I said it, we're winning the league. And obviously Chris is going to join me in that, in that belief and probably even go further with Champions League. And I'm going to support him because we have, we, you know, because from where we were, <laughs> from what Melvin said, where we were not even a year ago, um, you know, with Nuno and his his dead press conferences, and the whole, just the whole Spurs, was, I've just thought it was the worst time to be a Spurs fan. I was so drained. I never watched any... Um, uh, uh, post-match interviews with, with that guy. He just depressed me, you know? And from where, where we were then to where we are now, where, we, where I'm even talking about challenging for uh, uh, the title, even even saying, yes, we can even go into the champion. The fact that we're even in the Champions League, we've got we've come a long way, Chris. And so, yeah, um, yeah, I think definitely uh, he's going to speak to the boys. He's going to rally them up, get them really fired up. And we're going to go to Stamford Bridge and we're going to get a result, 100%. I don't think this is not the Spurs. This is not the Spursy Spurs that we're kind of used to where we get elated and then, you know, we, we get a big 10 and then we get battered. I think this is a different Spurs team. And Conte did say that um, at the end of last season. He did say, yeah, you know, Chelsea did beat us, but, you know, he wishes he can play them again with the team he had. I don't know if you remember when he said that. So he believes that his team is improved at the end of last season. I wonder what he thinks about what he has now, especially with the new signings. I wonder what he he believes he can he can achieve with Spurs this season, let alone playing at Chelsea. So I'm confident we can do it. Well, as we're recording this, Chelsea are one nil up at Goodison Park. Um, there's about 17 minutes of the game left. Uh, Jorginho uh, with a penalty in stoppage time just before half time. Um, Melvin, let's come to you. The Chelsea away game next week. How do you see that one going? And do you think that Antonio Conte will use the same starting eleven as today? Yeah, I think I think it will. Um, it'll be interesting if he starts Perisic or not. Um, I don't know if he wants to throw him. You know, into into a, into a London derby in a way. Um, I, I I don't know if he if if he's fit, fully fit. Um, I think Sassignon, after the performance he had today, I think deserves to start. I think confidence wise, um, I, I wouldn't change a thing. Um, tactically, he might you know tweak the system a bit and uh, and tell certain players to track him and do that sort of thing but i wouldn't change the lineup um i would do the, the exact same thing and uh obviously this is barring we have no injuries you know hopefully not, not nothing's wrong with anyone and, and and everyone is fully fit and uh yeah let the let the battle of the bridge you know throw him off it yeah i i really i really hope i really hope to see even if we don't win, I want to see that kind of fight that we had, you know, when we had the 2-2 two -two under Pochettino and that kind of, you know, tackles flying in, we, you know, scoring goals and, uh, you know, obviously I don't want to see us lose. I'd love to see us win, but I want to see that fight and determination. And uh, even if we're 1-0 down or, or we're, we're drawing the game, I want to see us go for the victory. I don't want to see us go for a draw like Mourinho did and then claim that and then claim we were disappointed not to win. You know, I think we had one shot on target that game, and, uh, and and Josie thought we played well. You know what I mean? And, and we had the ball for about fifteen minutes. I don't want to see that. I want to see us going, you know, toe to toe with them. They have a very strong squad, very big players. I'll tell you I what, though, we've we improved that. We used to be a bit of a lightweight team. With I was going to say, every yeah. single time I watch Spurs under Antonio Conte, um, I just think that the players have even more fight inside them. And, you know, even when we were 4-1 up today against Southampton, Antonio Conte is shouting like it's nil-nil. You know, he, d he just didn't want um, the Spurs players to be relaxed at any point in that game. We were just wanting to go for more and more goals and, uh, you know, be more intense in the game, which I thought was absolutely brilliant. And this is, of course... What Leo goes on about, this is why we've got a world-class manager. Um, Rich, let's come to you. Um, how do you see the Chelsea game going next week? Because, you know, all, all joking aside, I absolutely hate going to Stamford Bridge, have done for many years. Um, you know, we, we always seem to come away with 
um, hardly anything. Um, 30 yeah. years, one win. Yeah, we got bullied last year, I think. That was the, the, the problem. Um, I think last season as well, you look at the games, um, whether it was Lukaku up front or the way through the, the team, uh, the matchups we, they just didn't look like we were competitive at all. I think this year we we we've got a better plan for the games. Um, I always look at the important players in the team and what roles they have. Uh, the manager uh, Conte now has the generals within the team. He's got the, the the people in the team to be able to reinforce his plan. He's got that quarterback in uh, Harry Kane that can drop in there and dictate a bit of play in that final third. Um, Romero, obviously, as a, as a, as a centre-back, that, that kind of person that really kind of goes after uh, those players and kind of puts his foot in there where it needs to be. Um, the Chelsea game will be a different one uh, this season, for sure. Um, and I think the Chelsea uh, players realise that, realise that last season it was a bit of a transition. Um, and this year, there's going to be a lot more fight in the team. Um, today, the first like, 10 or 15 minutes, a little bit poor. I think we need to be on it from minute one. Uh, yeah. We need to kind of force the play. Um, I think it's really key that those midfield positions, I think Hoiberg's got to step up against Chelsea for us to, uh, to do well. And uh, Ben Tinkle's obviously got to have a really good game as well. Let's do score predictions. Rich, let's start with you. Mm. Me? Oh, my goodness. Um, or, or, or do you have, you have a think about it? We'll ask Leo first. Yeah, Leo's got it already. He's got that. Leo, yeah, Leo yeah. If, if, if we're winning the title, then surely we're winning this game, yeah? Well, not really, but because Man City... <laughs> we, Man, <laughs> we, we, uh, Man City lost against us and they ran away. They were 25 points clear at the end of the... or whatever, at the end of the season. But, you know, I don't believe this is the same Chelsea as, as um, you know last season. Um, I do believe it's time um, for Spurs to to win that Stamford Bridge. Like you said, you've been going there for so many years and we've only got one win in 30 years. The law of averages says that we have to win, regardless of whether it's Conte or not. We, could have, we can have Nuno next week. I think the law of averages um, says that we have to win. But the, the yeah, so the fact that we um yeah, it's coming home, baby. But the fact that you know um <laughs> the fact that we have Conte, the fact that Chelsea not they've got all the problems going, it, it, you know, surrounding that club. Um, I I don't think they're settled. I think we are we this is our best chance to do what we need to do and throw them off the bridge. So my prediction, um, I would definitely I I, I would definitely say three one. I would say I, I'm confident in saying three one. Yeah. Yeah, I, I, I think so. Yeah, I, I'm saying it. 3 1. Yeah, you're saying okay. that to yourself, I reckon. <laughs> no, <laughs> I'm saying the reason why I'm saying 3 1 is just purely based on on, on the, how we've been playing for the past five or six games in the Premier League. The, the fact that we've just been banging in the goals, the, the system that Conte is playing with the, with the win bags, the, the fact that we've got the depth, the fact that we have um, a Big players, big presence uh, of physical players now that that are gonna be that are gonna be challenging in that midfield. Um, so yeah, I mean, yeah, I think I think I think we're gonna do it. Make okay. Let me just let me. Can I just can I just tweak my result? I would say if it's not three one, it's definitely two one for sure. You're going for a win. We're going for a win, hundred percent. Melvin, are you going for a win? Um. I don't. I don't know. I honestly don't know. I can see us. I can see us winning, to be honest, because we really played well against Liverpool last season in a really, really similar, you know, high, high energy team, very strong, and and we played well, and we were unlucky not to win. And I can see us grinding out a one nil or or a two nil. But Chelsea definitely like to attack, and they play a similar system to us. It's just uh, we need to match them man for man. And if uh, Kane and Son on the day, you know, switch it on. Even Kulisevsky or, or anyone, if any of those players, you know, just decide to turn up and really, really switch it on, we can we can score two or three. So, yeah, I, in a way, I am confident that we will get a result. We won't leave, you know, empty-handed. So, I'll just say, I'll just say a 1-1. A no First of all, if we win 1-0, that is even stronger than us winning 3-1. How, how, yeah. many, how many results do you want? 
No, I'm just saying. I'm just because I was listening to what Mel. I was listening to Mel. Leo, you're covering yourself. You've gone one nil. No, 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 no. I'm saying three one. I'm saying three one. I'm saying three. Okay, I'm saying two one. I'm saying we're going to win two one, right? However, if we win, if it's a one nil, or even a two, those sort of one nil scores or the two nil scores, those sort of score lines shows that we're a robust team. You know, a three one. Result is oh Chelsea might have had an off day. It's not bro, make a decision, Chelsea. man. Sorry? Bro, make a decision. No, I've right. made, made a decision. What are you sticking with man? I've made a decision. Two one. We're gonna be leading two, two nil. We're gonna be leading two nil, and then Chelsea are gonna come and get get a goal back. What are you going for, Rich? So I, I, I'll give you a little bit of a, a reason, and then I'll give you. Uh, my prediction. So um, I've been watching the the Chelsea game now. Um, Kula Bar Bar yeah, so is kind of injured, um, mm-hmm. so I don't think he'll play. Um, I actually quite like him. Um, does it look a bad? Good... Does it look a bad injury then? I, I, it would look like he'd pull something when he came off. So whether it was a tweak or something, I don't think it was precautionary. I think he was brought off. Um, Kane and Sonny, if they turn up, I think we could win two 0 But um, I'm, I'm going to go for a draw, I think. I'm going to go for a draw. Uh, one all. I agree with you, Rich. I'm, I'm going mm. for one one as well. Yeah, I just... I just... <laughs> do you know what? I, just... I, want to feel, I want to feel like Leo. I really do. And I tell listen, you what, if, feel like if, me. Listen, if, the team if needs... Next week, Leo, I will feel like you. Please. Okay, let me tell you something for the Spurs fans, right? We are the 12th man, right? We need to bring... if. We can't physically be there on the pitch, right? But we need to give that 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 essence, that energy of of, of, of power. We need to come together <laughs> and just will the team to win. Because that's what Man United have, have been doing. They know they're expecting to win. Liverpool fans are expecting to win. Man City fans are expecting to win. So if we want to win, we need to adopt that same mentality and really give... Send those positive messages to the boys. What are you doing, Richard? Yeah. This is how I'm <laughs> that positive message. <laughs> By the way, anybody out there that wants a motivational speaker, Leo does this on the side. Listen, uh, this is the side him up and get that positive energy. There you got, you got, you got the 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 what do you call it? You got my my Instagram there. But yeah, I'm telling you right now. Yeah, I'll give you free consultation for a half an hour. <laughs> <laughs> well, we, I was going to ask you for a song, Leo, but um, yeah, ask you for a motivational Listen, speech. When we win next week, uh, when we, when we win next week, I'll, I'll sing a song for you. <laughs> well, final question for you all, and I, and I, and I think you, I know what, you, what you're going to go with, Leo. Um, where Spurs will finish in the Premier League at the end of the season? Um, Leo, should we start with you? No, you don't have to start with me. Let's start with Richard. Let's see what he thinks. Yeah. Go on, Rick. Better than last season, I think, uh, points-wise, comparable to Pochettino's best season. So between 86, 88 points, so closer to the top two. Um, And I I was thinking about this the other day, and I'll probably go second. Second? So who's above Liverpool or above Man City? Um, So I think Man City are going to still win the league. Uh, Man City as... Chelsea Liverpool. What? Chelsea Liverpool? Yeah. You can Chelsea yeah. all that. Well, okay. Yeah, I think so. Yeah. Okay. I'm going to go for third. Uh, I just think that the uh, the fact that Manchester City and Liverpool are so strong. Um, I think we're Mourne, going to. Though. Give... Mourne, not being in the team. I think Mourne is a massive loss. Like for me, like. He's, he's unlucky to not win the Ballon d'Or. You know, he's yeah. really close. Like winning the African Nations, being such a stalwart in the uh, Liverpool team. I think letting him go, well, they didn't pay him the money. Pay him the money. That's it. For me, he, he'd get into any team in the Premier League. Like yeah. an amazing finisher, like electric on the ball. For me, that loss, I think, is going to come back and bite Liverpool in the arse, for sure. I yeah, hope so. yeah. I might feel differently uh, if we beat Chelsea next week. I'll, I'll <laughs> <say that> now. <laughs> when we beat Chelsea yeah. next week, when hopefully, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, Mel, what about you? Yeah, I, I'll go third. Third, I think um, 
will will improve on last season. We'll definitely be within within a shout of the league. Maybe yeah. you know if if we're there and thereabouts, and um, it'll be it'll be good to see uh, to see us finish. You know, eighty five points, eighty six, eighty seven. You know that kind of that kind of point tally. You know, right? We just need to be more yeah. consistent. And that's the you know the best season tally we've seen. Well, I the one I've seen and you know under the Pochettino you know, the last season at the lane, and that was an amazing season. And if we can replicate or get anywhere near that, I'll be happy. And then next season, then you can really really push on and and improve key areas where you could see holes and gaps in the team. But at this point of time, third would be third and uh, maybe a trophy. <laughs> Did anyone say trophy today? Because I came in late. <laughs> No, we haven't. Not, yeah. I, I haven't even had the yet. chance to say the trophies are coming. I believe the trophies are coming. We're gonna get. We're gonna win something. We have to win something this yeah. uh, this season. I just want to see that bus go down the high road and all of the fans be there celebrating a trophy win. Wouldn't that just be um, amazing? Um, we all deserve it as well as fans, and some of these yeah. players deserve it as well. The likes of Hugo Lloris, Harry Kane, Hun Min Son. You know, lots of players there deserve a trophy. And, of course, Antonio Conte being world-class as well. Um, Melvin, thanks so much for joining us. You're not going to ask me, then. You're not going to ask me what I think. I thought no, we had no. your no. I thought we had your answer. Leo could have been going to win everything. Just skim over Leo, right? I okay. thought we had yours. No, no, no. We ain't had about because I want to address the Spurs fans. I, want, I don't want to talk Go to on. you guys. Because you guys just, you know, just, you don't have what it takes to be a Spurs fan. You're not serious. So listen to what I'm saying right now, Spurs fans out there. When is the t- when is the moment are we going to stand up and, and decide that this is the time to support our team? This is the greatest time to be the Spurs fan. We've got one of the greatest managers of all time behind the hel- at the helm of, of our team, of our beloved team. This is the best chance we have. We have strength in depth. We have St. Kane and Son and Kulisevsky and all the other players right there. This is the best chance for us to do what we want to do and bring glory back to the lane, right? So I'm telling you right now, and I'm going to say, put it on record. Make sure you highlight this, tag this video, make it a meme, whatever you want to do. Spurs are winning this, the league this season, right? This is going to happen. This is the best time for us Spurs to believe. This is the best time, as Conte said, for us Spurs to start dreaming because we can do it. We are going to be this Number one. And when we do it, Chris, when we do it, Chris, uh, you can't call me Leo the Lion anymore. You have to call me King Leo. In fact, you have to address me as your highness on your head, right? Because I'm the I'm gonna take I'm gonna take the plaudits, and you're gonna say it's Leo that is the reason why Spurs won the league because Leo had the belief and Leo transferred the belief to all the Spurs fans watching, and they took it out into the world, into the ether, and spread all the positive joy and bring us that number one spot this season. I think one thing is for sure. I think that this clip will go viral and it will be clip. <laughs> yeah. If yeah. we do win it, yeah. Yeah, well, or, or if we don't, yeah. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Melvin, thanks so much for joining us this evening and uh, tell everyone where they can find you on social media. Um, yeah, I'm on Instagram and Twitter. My name's Shwira Melvin on Twitter. Um, I'm usually just chilling, talking about Spurs, you know, bantering <laughs> Arsenal fans, you know, defending my club till the end, you know, going down the Twitter rabbit hole and, and, and arguing about who's better, Kulusevsky or Saka, and, you know, just, you know, wasting my time on Twitter. And if you want to follow me, yeah, I'll, 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 fo- I'll usually follow back. And uh, yeah, Spurs are going to win the league. <laughs> We're going to be fair. <laughs> I'm going to tattoo one on one on just here between my gap team. One of your two. One of your two. You see one here? Yeah. You see the gap? That says one. You see there? I'll it's pay already, for that, I don't even do tattoos. I just do gap. One. You see it there? <laughs> Leo, tell everyone where they can find you on social media and what you're up to at the moment. Well, listen, I'm going to be preparing my crown for this end of the season. That's what I'm going to be doing. <laughs> Getting ready for Spurs and the bus ride. And with everyone here, we're just going to be having a good time. Well, now this you can hit me up on uh, my Instagram, Leo the Lion, Leo the Lion Gram. Just message me if you want that positive vibe. I'll send you some messages so that you can uplift yourself. But that's what we're going to do. One, baby. And Rich, thanks so much for joining us again. And tell everyone where they can find you and, uh, and what you're up to at the moment. Yeah, just training London Marathon like yourself. Um, I know you're doing it for prostate cancer. Um, yeah. I've been doing it for my foundation, so 
guys definitely uh, support myself and Chris, obviously with our training and uh, the obviously the great causes that we're doing that for. So that and yeah, Twitter Marathon Champ and Instagram, you guys know just Richard White at MBE. But um, it's always a great pleasure. And remember, everybody, subscribe. Yes, obviously for Chris, Make everybody sure. needs to subscribe and like. Subscribe. That. It's, Make sure, support baby, support Chris and the great content he puts out there. Chris, man, what? I've got to give a big, a big shout out to you, man. You just, um, you know, since we've been knowing each other, man, I've just been watching your content throughout all the day, and you, you've literally been giving me all the content for Spurs. So big up to you, Chris, man. You are amazing. Thank you, Leo. Thank you, and uh, thank you, Richard, um, and Melvin, and. Thank you to all of the viewers and listeners um, for Melvin. watching and listening to the show. Richard. And hopefully we can get another three points next weekend on Sunday at Stamford Bridge and stay top of the Premier League. Um, until then, uh, stay safe, stay well, and uh, I will see you on the next one. Come on, you Spurs. Come on, you Spurs. Come on, you Spurs.